Hey everybody, it is Tom from Top Spanish Designs, Regal Robot. Thanks for joining us for yet another uh, live sort of sneak peek inside the studio and uh, actually inside my very cramped office that is getting closed in and closed in as more and more stuff gets developed here. <coughs> Pardon me. So, uh, today we've got a couple of things we're going to look at. We've uh, got some new... Um, some new pieces to talk about. We've got some things we might talk about that might be coming up soon. We've got some older stuff that's now starting to ship. So I'm going to cover a lot of ground. Uh, this is a Q&A. Uh, Rob is behind the camera as always. Hi. <laughs> and we will be looking for questions as we go. So if you have questions about something, whether it's an old thing, a new thing, something that's coming up, something you just want to see or something you just want to know, um, Please ask in the comments, and that's, of course, if you're watching this live on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, please like and subscribe. That's what the kids do, right? They, they point? I think that's what they point. They point. Do. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, and share this with your friends. Tell folks that it's happening. And if they've got questions, they can also put them in the comments. So, any questions in the comments, Rob will read them to me. I'll think about answering them. And in the meantime, we'll just start talking about some of the cool stuff that is around. Uh, I think... I think I'm going to start magnets here. Um, actually, you know what? I'll just give quick updates on these two guys. So, uh, Gamorrean Guard, concept maquette from The Mandalorian. This is based on the maquette made for Season 2. Uh, you actually saw the guards in the Season 2 opener as sort of you know, ring fighters or whatever you want to call them. This has a really cool kind of glad gladiatorial sort of look to it. Uh, it was sculpted by a guy named Tony McVeigh for the production under the uh, direction of Doug Chang in the art department. And we had very direct access to that original sculpt. And this, every one of ours has direct lineage back to that sculpt that was made for the show. Um, these are available on the site right now. They're in the custom character studio section. And they are starting to ship in about two weeks. So I believe the first 100 plus of them will be going right out. Uh, where actually they're, they're just putting the finishing touches on the custom bases that we have made. Uh, what's interesting is the base is a unique profile that, that they used for the production. And we actually went, found some place that could tu duplicate that specifically. We didn't just want to put them on a round wood base. We wanted to make sure it matched what was used in the show. So, uh, or rather in the show's pre-production. So that's that, Gamorrean Guards uh, uh, concept maquette, Gamorrean fighter as they call them, will be shipping in the next few weeks. If you want to place an order, now's a great time for that. And there is the payment plan on that. I'm going to put him way back here, buy nothing in particular. <coughs> the uh, Job of the Hut maquettes are now shipping. These have been shipping for really a few months now, and uh, these, this was developed with direct access to the original that is hanging out at the old Skywalker Ranch archives. Um, we did not scan it, uh, but we did uh, tons of photographs and measurements and things like that and then digitally recreated the piece. It's really made to mimic that, you know, tr try number three was just right, quote unquote, uh, Jabba the Hutt maquette from the famous, uh, <coughs> excuse me, those those great making ups that they did in 1983 where you had um, from Star Wars to Jedi, the making of a saga, you had classic creatures, Return of the Jedi and all of that stuff. And to me, this was an iconic, iconic image when I was a kid. I was obsessed with the look. It's clearly not the final Jabba, but this was Phil Tippett's interpretation of the, that spark, that idea. And clearly this is what you know, uh, was was directly used when they made that big large one. This was their their main point of inspiration for that. I, my understanding is this is a uh, limited run of 250 pieces. Um, my understanding is about 207 of them have been sold so far. So there's only about 40 or 43 left right in that range. So if you're thinking about getting it, I wouldn't hold off too much longer. Uh, I don't know exactly how long they're gonna last, but it's it's probably a great time to, to think about picking this up. And a lot of folks have uh, picked these up from us and have been sharing photos online. We love that, by the way. If you ever get any stuff from us, please, if you post pictures, just tag us or send us an email with some photos. Um, there's nothing cooler than just seeing our art in someone's collection and seeing how they've made it a part of their space and their life. and you know, their, uh, how they mix it in with their other collectibles and things like that. I just really, really get off seeing that kind of stuff. And I think um, if you visit our site, go to the news section, there's actually a news entry from a few weeks back 
with a whole bunch of customer pictures of their job of the huts. Um, every one of these is hand painted, made in the USA. They're all a unique work of art, a real tribute to what Phil Tippett did behind the scenes. Uh, the Gamorrean is the same way. Every one of them is hand painted. Uh, it's you're you're really getting something special with this stuff. This isn't uh, wildly mass produced stuff that's uh, you know done in some kind of nameless factory somewhere. These are people who care about what they're doing and who, who care about what goes into your uh, into your collection and your home. So. The Beast Collection. So we've been doing magnets for a while. Um, we've got a pretty varied range of them on the site. Um, you know, I, I, spoiler alert, there's more coming. <laughs> um, right now, uh, you're looking at here the what we call the Beast Collection. Uh, and that ranges from the uh, Bantha seen in, obviously, A New Hope and Mandalorian. The Rancor from Return of the Jedi. And this is actually developed from the same scan of the prop that we use for our Rancor prop replicas. Oh, and if you happen to order one of our Rancor prop replicas, uh, there's 24 of them being painted just outside the door here right now. Uh, the first 24 pieces should be done in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're waiting for some custom foam inserts to come in before those will ship, but I'm expecting at least the first wave of Rancors to go out in very early March. And then every two to three weeks after that, there'll be another similar sized batch. Um, it's really cool seeing that many of them lined up. Uh, the castings all came out beautifully. The, the paint is going on wonderfully. I'm, I'm really, really excited. Every time I go in the room and I just see this massive lineup of Rancors. It's a herd of Rancor? A, a, pride? A pride of Rancor? <laughs> a murder of Rancor? Like how many, what, if anybody knows what group of Rancor is officially called, please put it in the comments. Um, and speaking of the comments, anybody just tuning in, this is live if you're watching on Facebook. This is a Q&A as well as a show and tell. So if you have questions about any of the things that I am showing or telling, please uh, post them in the comments. If you have questions about anything else, give them a post. Rob will try and catch them and read them, and, if, uh, and we'll, we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, continuing on the Beast series, uh, I believe we were up to the Tauntaun. This is based on Han Solo's Tauntaun. Uh, that uh, is obviously identifiable because it doesn't have a broken horn, which is the way that we all, everybody knows that's how you know Hans Tauntaun from Luke's. Um, and then today's release, uh, switch him into the middle, this is one of my favorite things. I, I have such uh, a like, nostalgic connection to the Dubak from Star Wars. And I'm talking old school, first movie, 1977 rubber dewback, not you know the CGI thing, which is cool. It's just it's a different beast to me. Um, there was a program guide that you could get at the theater at the time, and I and I got that. And in it was a, you, 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 uh, I don't know, it was maybe 12 by 9 or something. It was a, a decent sized magazine, and it was it ran a long ways. And one of the pictures in there was the stormtrooper on the dewback. The classic sort of angled shot, you know, I guess it's 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 this kind of angle, so you're getting that three-quarter of the head. You have the, the sand trooper on top with a big lance, and he just looked like a guy in a skull mask riding a dinosaur. And in my kid brain in 1977, that was the coolest thing in the world. Truth be told, in my adult brain in 2021, it's also still the coolest thing ever. So years back, we scanned an original prop from the first movie's production. It was an extra casting they had made of the Dubak head, and the guy who made him for the movie had kept it. And we got to scan that, and we used it when we made our Dubak sofa. Uh, if you're just tuning in, <laughs> and you've never seen the Dubak sofa, go to our website and search the words Dubak sofa, or go to the custom furniture and decor studio, um, because we turned a Dubak into a sofa. I don't know what else to say. Uh, it was one of Rich Riley's most brilliant ideas, in my opinion, and he's had a lot of them. Um, to me, the profile of this beast is everything, and it's the, because we're using that scan, it's super faithful to the original. It's asymmetrical. You know, one side, there's a little more space behind the jaw than the other side. It's very narrow from the front, and it's something that I didn't even realize until we got the scan of him is that, you know, the Dubak does not have a big, wide head like the toy. Now, that toy is pretty amazing. <laughs> you moved his tail and the head moved. But the 
In the movie, they always sort of shoot him from the side or three quarter. Even in the promotional photos, it's always side or three three quarter. And once you can see that it's a really narrow head, and you start looking at those shots again, and you start looking at the movie, especially where he's outside the cantina, when Luke comes out with uh, Ben and he's like, you know, you'll have to sell your speedo. Um, that's where you can sort of make it out a little bit, but uh, there's a few really rare behind the scenes photos where you can see that head was just super narrow and they put it onto a rhinoceros body uh, to make that giant awesome prop. Um, so that Dubeck magnet is brand new. It came out today. You can get it on our website. Go to regalrobot.com, go to the news section and you can see the newest things or just go to the, click the big Star Wars button and you can see all the Star Wars stuff we make. Um, before we jump around, what do we got? Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, we have someone asking if we're ever going to do a Dubak maquette or statue. I, I would love to do more Dubak stuff. Uh, we have a few ideas for, for Dubak things. We, um, if we did a maquette, I would really want to do that classic prop looking Dubak. Um, the thing with our maquette series is, for the most part, those are made as replicas of things that were made for the production. We're trying to recreate artifacts and, and to give folks a direct connection to the making of the movie. So if we were doing some sort of Dubak statue, it would be more of a, um, I, you know, a, a replica of the prop, but maybe scaled down. That might be an interesting way to think about it. But that would be the way I would want to do it if we were going to do something like that. Uh, James said he just ordered the Dubak Baggett, so thank, thank you, you, James. James. <laughs> uh, we have a couple of people asking about a couple of things in the background, but I'll let, I'll let you get to some of that okay. stuff. Okay, yeah, some yeah. of the stuff we'll get to. Some of it might just stay there. We don't know. Yeah, maybe. Some of it we're going to see. So, uh, yeah, so that's the, the Beast Collection. I'm going to move these off to the side. I'll just get the phone. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I'm surprised that doesn't happen more. Like, <laughs> yeah. The phone yeah, right. All the time. <laughs> so, um... How about, uh, speaking, of, speaking of beasts, let's just see if there's enough room to get this out of here. Um, I move this chair out of here. I'm, I'm going to have to stand up for this one. I think Rob's going to have to do some, yeah, some we'll, camera we'll, jujitsu. Yeah, we're uh, rearranging the furniture. Apologies if anybody just got seasick from the, <laughs> the, the camera moves. Um, so, uh, Push him back just a tiny bit okay, if, if you yep, can. Yep. Let's get more of him in shot. Yeah, perfect. There we go. I just don't want to knock anything yep, over. Yeah, very good. Uh, so this is a do back. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's a that's a life size tauntaun. People don't realize uh, how big these things are. Um, I'm not a tiny thing, so I'm, I'm like kind of normal size. I like to think so. You can kind of get a sense. He's he's big. Um, I kind of want to like just sit behind him and like, <laughs> yeah, get, get the, the reins out. You know. <laughs> um, so. This is the deluxe version of our life-size Tauntaun bus. This is made in what we call our custom character studio. 100% made in the USA, made in New York by the folks here who restore the original props uh, over at my other business, Tom Spina Designs, and also make things for like Mandalorian and uh, for commercials and all kinds of other stuff. Um, over the years, we've gotten a restore for the uh, Lucasfilm archives, the old Skywalker Ranch archives. Um, gotten to restore for uh, Henson and a lot of other places. We've gotten our hands on a lot of amazing original material. And a few of the things we've gotten to spend a lot of time, or a time around are Tauntauns, which is really cool. And we're now able to take some of that knowledge and, and sort of, uh, for lack of a better word, intimacy that we had with those and bring that to something fans can now bring into their homes. The, uh, this fella is already sold, um, but we are making more. We currently... Uh, the first few have sold, we did a few that had no snow and things like that, and then we have the deluxe that comes with the snow and the rains. Um, either version uh, can have either the broken horn, Luke's Tauntaun, or can have the uh, complete horn on that side and go more like Han or just a generic Tauntaun. Just as long as he doesn't freeze before you hit the first marker, you're in good shape. Um, the... So one of the pieces we did get to spend a lot of time around is the one that was actually used in Jabba the Hutt's palace in Return of the Jedi in 1983. And that piece is in the archives still. It's um, a piece that was from Empire, and you can screen match it to a bunch of places in Empire. And that means there's specific details about it that you can line up on screen. And in particular, there's, there's ways that the, the fur is patterned on the neck 
and a few things like that that let us kind of look and say, okay, that's here it is in Return of the Jedi, here it is in Empire. Um, there's some great behind the scenes photos where you can see it during the uh, production of Jedi and things as well. And being around that piece was really cool because it's, uh, unlike some of the other ones we restored where they were just a face, that one was the whole head, the whole neck, the horns, everything. Um, and so we were able to get a lot of information off of that piece. We go to the archives whenever we can. Whenever we're doing something like this, we go there, we study the piece, we photograph it, we measure it, we do you know, all of the research we possibly can to make sure that what we're making is as faithful to that original prop as possible. Um, let's see here, what else? There's uh, currently, I believe they're listed at a 12 to 16 week wait. The way that we're doing these is in small waves, kind of like we do the big Chewy bust, which we featured on a previous video. We do those about five or seven at a time. Um, these guys will probably do about five at a time. The first wave is sold. We have another wave going into production now. I think three or four of those are already taken as well. So um, if it's something you're interested in, there's a, an extended payment plan because this is a high ticket item. But it, uh, it's a good time to get in because we're going to be starting another wave of them probably in about a month. Um, any other questions about this stuff? Just well, everyone I, saying how right. incredible and amazing it looks. A lot of Thanks. praise. They mean me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the Tauntaun's okay, too. Aww. <laughs> um, well, thank you for that. We, we put a lot of effort into this. So the history of this piece is interesting. Um, the face is something that uh, Rich Riley did the rough out with using a casting of a piece that Stuart Treborn had made for Empire Strikes Back. It was a big plaster buck that was initially intended to do things like pattern the hair off and stuff. Nobody knows the exact history of the piece, but it looks to be the sort of thing where they had taken a snap mold off the sculpt while it was in progress so that someone could get a head on you know, maybe art department or whatever who was building the, the life-size one with patterning some of the neck and things like that. But it was really cool as a starting point because it gave us a lot of landmarks and size reference. Um, then we got to combine that with all the research we did at the archives and uh, Ricky Vitus re-sculpted the face. Um, Samantha Martino sculpted new teeth and tongue and everything like that. I believe Sam also sculpted the eyeball. Ricky, maybe Maria worked, uh, Maria Turan worked on the horns. Um, Marcus Los uh, Los uh, worked on the horns as well and did the molds for those. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Nate Hernandez and Patrick Louie did the rough out for the uh, the neck and the back of the head and also did the uh, the molds for that. Um, real group effort. I, and then uh, finishing, I did the the paint on the first few. Uh, Melissa Dooley, uh, sorry, Melissa Ocampo did the uh, paint on some of the other ones and I did the rains and snow on this fella just because I like to do the fun stuff. I also like to do the distressing on the hair. You know, the, it isn't, this isn't just like, you know, fake hair put on. Uh, we, we get the hair, we dye it, we texture it, we do some paint into it, and then we distress the heck out of it. And to me, that's really the important part. You need this thing to look matted and gross like he's been out in the snow and, uh, and, and everything. Even the one that was in Jabba's palace was still all matted down and kind of gross, which I don't know, there's life in that, I guess. Um, do you want to start looking maybe at some of the details of this? Or if there's any questions or well, anything we can drop We have someone asking, how does it smell? Uh, it smells better on the outside. <laughs> so, um, why don't we look at, can we, can we get something where like the eyes catch on a little bit of light? Yeah, it actually is right now. So the way that we did these eyes is it's actually a three-dimensional sculpture inside of there. And so you're getting texture in the iris and things like that. We've got actual dimensional veins and things going in there, which is uh, an old effects guy trick with uh, fibers and yarn and things. Um, the uh, eyelashes are all glued in by hand. A lot of the, the finer hair is glued in a little at a time by hand. Some of it is a fabric backed hair. Um, each of the, um, the whiskers are drilled because this is resin rather than foam latex or anything like that. Each of those is hand drilled and glued in place one at a time. The nostrils have little bits of, of snot and snow and ice and things on them. I'm sure that's catching the light or I hope it is. Mm -hmm. um, same with around the mouth. There's extra gloss kind of dripping out here and there that you can kind of hopefully catch. 
Um, the teeth are all stained and etched, you know, it's not, this is, this is not a guy who just got out of the Tauntaun dentist. <laughs> um, uh, what's one of the neat things with the horns is there's actually less texture on them than they look like. Uh, and that's something we got off the real props. The real props were much smoother. In fact, they're even a little smoother than we did it because it just, it looks, it's weirdly effective on screen. In person, you look at it and you're like, oh, that's flat with just paint. But then on screen, it just pops as textured. So we did kind of halfway between the amount of texture on the real one and how it looks on screen, just because we didn't want someone getting this thing and thinking we scrimp, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're uh, scrimping on the details. Um, the, oh, oh gosh, all his little nubs and horns, they're all broken in the right places. All of that's on purpose. Um, you know, it's a really challenging piece to, uh, to sculpt because he's very wonky. He's very asymmetrical. He's got a ton going on and you have to sculpt old school on something like this. We couldn't make this the way a modern creature would be made. This needed to be done in such a way that, and let me wheel him, I'm gonna back him up a little bit just so you can do more of the profile because I love the profile on this guy. Um, but yeah, you, you couldn't go through and sculpt this hyper reel with pores and things like that. It has to have that, that chunky texture and it has to have that exaggerated, those exaggerated wrinkles and things like that. Um, we want this to feel like the prop. We don't want this to feel like uh, a modern day interpretation or anything like that. Um, the reins are all distressed as well. These uh, started off white um, and the, everything is riveted the way they were in the movies. There's actually a couple of different types of reins on there. Some of them have rivets, some of them have stitches. We went with the rivet look. Um, the, uh, the snow is, is not going to come off. It's a special faux snow you use in, in set dressing where it actually gets kind of uh, turns to uh, almost like a glue when you're done with it. Um, but it's got a real nice sparkle to it and it just feels, uh, it feels awesome. Um, he's got a little bit of a mustache, which I just, I love that kind of detail. I love the way the snow catches in the hairs here and there. Um, uh, you know, even things like, I don't know if we can see it here, but just that the snow is caught in the rains, all these sort of like happy accidents that happen when you're putting something like this together. We want this to feel that kind of realism. Like it just, it existed, it was there, and now it's on your wall. Um, and even though this is on a stand here, it is made to be uh, put on a wall. Um, and it's, it'd be easy enough for someone to make a stand for it. It just, uh, on the back, it has a French cleat. Um, you can't really see the back here because of the way we've got it mounted to this stand, but it's just plain black, uh, black fabric on the back. Um, anybody got questions about the Tauntaun? Take a look. <laughs> Rob's now doing the yeah, acrobatics. Yeah, I'm a contortionist now. The phone to get the questions <laughs> and hold this one in place. Uh, how much does it weigh? Uh, uh, less than a real Tauntaun, but more than you'd expect. <laughs> more than the I want to say it's about 25 pounds. Um, we definitely recommend hitting a stud when you put the, the cleat on the wall. It ships with what's called like a, a hangman cleat, a French cleat. So it's, you know, two pieces that uh, intersect. It's a little metal uh, strip. And I would hit a stud with the center of it and then put two anchors on either side so it can't tilt. Uh, someone just asking about, is it made of resin? You discussed that. Yep. So this is resin. It's foam filled on the horns. Uh, it is hollow and fiberglass backed on the head. Uh, and then the torso of it is rigid polyurethane foam with a shell. Yeah, that's about everything for the questions. Okay, cool. So let's uh, push him out of the way. So is anybody asking about stuff in the background yet? Yeah, um, that Should big gray stick, maybe. Gray stick? Yeah, I don't know. So I'll get the desk back, and yeah. maybe I'll sit down so you can... Yeah, let me better. get ready so, if you're uh, on the ride. As, as Rob's making everybody sick with the camera moves again, <laughs> the, uh, this is live if you're watching on Facebook. It is a and a Please feel free to ask questions in the comments there. Um, we got people asking about this gray stick. Um... So this is actually the sort of thing that's, that's often around here and in the background of my office. Um, 
we debated if we were going to put this in or not today. I guess it's too late. I guess it's in. It's in now. Um, anybody know what this is? <laughs> Let me get a drink of water. Let's see. I, I'm on pins and needles. I don't know if they'll get it. Has anybody said uh, Bantha toothpick yet? Yeah, we got that, and <laughs> and we got Gaffy. <laughs> Hold on, wait. Does it work on? It probably would. Yeah. Yeah, it works on works on tauntauns too. <laughs> so, uh, this is a uh, technically just this part of it is a replica of a Fijian war club called the Totokia. Um, years ago, I made this with a friend of mine uh, uh, who um, helped redetail the end of it. This initially came from Fiji, at least the, the bulk of it, and then we sort of accurized it a bit uh, to make it a little more like the Star Wars one. Uh, in the interim, about a year or so back, the folks making Mandalorian reached out to my other company, Tom Spina Designs, to get um, copies of this to use when they were bringing the Tusken Raiders pack. And it was really cool to know that in advance, that, that, you know, that they were getting these. Uh, it was you know, we had no idea how they were going to use them. We didn't know if it was just going to be in the background somewhere, or if the Tuscan Raiders were coming back, or what. Um, but so that was neat. So this uh, is because the, the of the way they used it and used it as it is. This is um, you know from the same molds as the one then used in the Mandalorian, which we uh, provided. So we're going to be doing a replica of this. Uh, we're actually going to be doing two replicas of this. Uh, the one that you see here is the foundation for our Mando style one. Uh, this will have uh, the silver spike end on it with the fins and everything like that. For the Mando one, that's probably going to be resin. Uh, part of that is to keep cost down and also to differentiate it from the other one that we're doing. Uh, it also makes more sense for the Mando one based on the way they did the end of it. And that's something we'll show in a future video. Um, but what's cool is on that Mando one, you're going to have that piece that is you know, really... A brother to what you saw on screen and as accurate as you're going to get in terms of this part of it. The other one we're going to do uh, will be the uh, more expensive deluxe version that will be the A New Hope, what we're calling the hero version, which is the one Peter Diamond, you know, does the, the over the head thing. It's backwards, but you get the idea. Uh, and uh, attacks Luke with. And We've gotten to study the uh, the Totokia section in the archives on that piece, which uh, those were cast pieces, so there's a, a related piece in the archives, so we were able to look at that and see how it differs from ours and punch up what we've got to make a new version of that. And then that one will have a welded steel spike end, uh, all of this for display only. Please don't attack anyone with them or, you know, pick your bantha's teeth. Um, but... Uh, so right now, that's the, th that's the thought. We'll be doing the, uh, the Mando one soon, and then we'll be doing the A New Hope Deluxe one. We'll probably put them out around the same time. You know, they're probably still a couple of months out. Um, you know, folks that, ever, uh, that do any licensing realize this is a slow process when you're talking about licensing props. Uh, the development takes a long time. Getting things right takes a long time. Research, all of that stuff. And then, you know, just the approvals with uh, Disney and Lucasfilm, they're all very involved and, and very concerned that what we're making is as good as it possibly can be. Um, so anything you you see in one of these, you know, there, there's times where we'll show stuff that we've been working on for a year. Uh, I remember when the Rancor came out, uh, we were working on that for almost a year before I even showed it to anyone. Uh, it was really tough to sit on that. And we've got a bunch of stuff that we've got going now. There's a few things that have been going for, oh gosh, uh, there's, there's one big project that we're hoping to debut... I'm looking at my, I'm, at, I'm looking at the <laughs> board, you guys never get to see. Um, we have something we're hoping to debut for May the 4th that is going to be a really intense set, a whole bunch of pieces, a whole bunch of parts. We've been working on it for months and months and months, um, and it's really exciting stuff, and we've got great names involved. We've already got signature plaques done. Like, there's so much that's been done for this, and yet I can't say anything yet, so it's, uh, um, it can be frustrating, but it's also, you know, kind of cool. Hopefully people will start guessing as to what's going on and, and maybe pick up on some stuff. Other things that are going to be coming out. Uh, let's see here. We've got um, a bunch of new plaques, uh, the wood, wood art plaques we're doing coming out. We've got two that are going to be really great for anybody who's a fan of Mos Eisley, the cantina, that sort of thing. Um, which, you know, anybody who knows me. Um, 
and uh, a bunch of other magnets in the works. We've got some really cool skull stuff coming. Uh, one that we just saw the prototype for today that's a small a small piece, but it, I think people are really going to dig that when that it's comes out. It's a good out. one. And then a big piece, so kind of a companion, a very much like the companion piece to this, I would say. Mm, totally. Um, so there's going to be something coming out uh, relatively soon for that. I would say that's within one to two months we'll be able to announce that one because that piece is prototyped. Uh, it is already, you know, sculpted up. It's it's in molding now, so we should have a casting and get a test paint done in a few weeks. I'm looking at Rob for any more questions. People keep on asking about chess pieces. I'm not chess sure what pieces. I don't know. like like Queen's Game. I'm guessing. I mean, yeah. it's it's the hot show. Yeah, yeah, well, that's cool. Um, I I love that show. That, yeah, that was me a too. Lot of fun. Really good. And I like, I mean, chess is fun. Yeah, totally. I would love to, like, I mean, it'd be neat to make, like, some kind of chess set. Yeah. Like, but Star Wars, like, maybe Monsters or yeah, something. Yeah, themed. Like, on. we could do that. Totally could. I'll bet we could get, like, the uh, the actual digital they used in, like, 2015 when they scanned the old props. We do have some pull. We could probably get that. We probably could. I, you know, if we do that. We need to get at least three signatures on that plaque. Probably three. Yeah, three seems about the right there's, number. Like, I mean, there's three guys. Three on guys the jumping right and out. And they're friends, but we could like we could pull that. We could off. probably do this. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, so, that's a great idea. Something to think about. <laughs> um, I think that's almost going to do it. Uh, Rob will do one last check for questions. I'm going to take another drink of water. Yeah, I mean, all that speculating left me parched. Just to circle back around, we have someone asking for details on the Rancor. They may have missed what you said about how we're going with that. Gotcha. So uh, first 24 of them are in paint now. Uh, we're expecting to start shipping those in two to three weeks. Uh, a little of that depends on when the foam inserts come in for the packaging. And... Um, from there, we're going to be doing them in batches of about 12 to 24 at a time, and they will ship every few weeks. We'll ship another batch of them out. Um, if you purchased one, you'll get an email from us as soon as yours is ready to ship. Um, if you were one of the early adopters, thank you very much. You got in um, just in time, and yours will go out first. They're going to go out in the, the number order that you got it, and the way those numbers are given out is always by who got in first, who bought first. Uh, any chance of a Tuscan Raider bust? I would love to do that. Uh, we it's it is something that has been on and off of our list, our our like production list for a long time. Um, it's we've done all the research on it. We've measured the heck out of the originals in the archives. I'm actually still trying to track down some fabric bits that uh, I, I'm not a hundred percent happy with the options available for the uh, the wrap fabric right now. Um, we know how we would do it. It's Honestly, I'm looking at the board. Uh, our board does not have any holes in it right now. It's like a cork board with things hanging off the sides. <laughs> yeah, of we need a bigger cork board. on the top. Um, so it won't be anytime soon. I would love that. It's very, very high on my list of busts. Um, last is um, someone says we deserve an Oscar. So, <laughs> so, so maybe we, we can wrap it up with well, that. That'd be great. I know, right? I never thought. All right, we should do an Oscar. No, <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll wrap it up on that. I hope people uh, enjoyed the closer look at the Tauntaun. I hope everybody liked my Bantha toothpick. Um, if you're thinking about ordering a Job of the Hut or a, a Gamorrean, please order them right away. The Gamorreans are shipping very soon. Job of the Huts are running out. CZ3s are actually also shipping now, and we have a few of those in stock, so anybody who orders one of those, it'll ship right out. And uh, we'll keep thinking about that chess set idea. That's really good. Sounds stuff. like a good idea. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.